Hello everybody, my name is Daniel Durish, I'm from Basta Digital and uh, I'm hosting another session of SEOs RAS, a virtual conference for these days, but uh, originally a former uh, Central European SEO conference focused on different topics, including international SEO. And our guest today is Agnieszka Haninovic. She's a senior SEO specialist at Blue Rank, a Polish agency, well-known agency. And she's going to talk about how to use your business potential with international SEO. So she will cover such topics as how to do online market analysis, analysis for uh, different uh, international markets. And also, for example, how to focus on user targeting in different countries or how to choose um, your domain when you are expanding. And also she will cover other topics. Um, also Blue Rank uh, uh, originally founded a Central and Eastern European Digital Alliance that Basta Digital is also a member. And uh, I think the, their uh, experience in international SEO also shows in uh, starting this digital alliance that now covers uh, more than 10 countries in Europe. And uh, uh, just to remind you that uh, you can ask questions uh, on Slido. So I think you will find the link to Slido uh, in uh, the chat, but you can also just go to slido.com and enter SEOs RAS as the event code. So Agnieszka, welcome. Just please unmute yourself before uh, talking. Great. Yes, yeah, sorry. Hi, so, hi. So welcome uh, once again, and uh, you can start with your presentation. Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Uh, I will share my screen. So I need also a confirmation that everything is nice and clear. Do you see my presentation? Yes, it's working. Thank you. Okay, great. So I will make a, a quick uh, introduction um, in addition to, to what uh, Daniel mentioned. So I've been working uh, on SEO over uh, five years now. Uh, I think in the, in the, in the biggest company uh, and digital marketing company in Poland, uh, I lead projects from various industry uh, like uh, uh, bookstore or even um, heavy machinery marketplace, which is quite uh, tough to, to optimize when it comes to, for example, content, uh, content marketing and content positioning. But it's, it's, uh, it's very nice to have this type of a project, believe me, in your port portfolio. Uh, my main SEO interests uh, are the, mostly about the technical uh, SEO and also international. Uh, I'm really keen uh, about the information or architecture optimization of uh, e-commerce website also. And uh, I am a big fan of the good coffee especially from Ariel Press. And of course, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the, of the good dry wine. Um, okay, I also uh, wanted to check uh, a chat a quick to, to make sure that everything is nice and, and clear here. Okay, everything is okay. So let's dive in more into detail. First of all, I just wanted to share with you some, some tips, not, uh, not only uh, when you are the SEO specialist, but also uh, if, uh, if you have a website and you are wondering that is it worth it to go international or not, or how to uh, analyze the, the business potential that you might have. So let's make some assumption uh, here. Okay, so let's assume that your online business has a stable position uh, on the online local market. And you know that it's not possible to achieve more because of market saturation or a high position on the most uh, crucial keywords for your business. 
you want to increase your brand awareness, for example, in the Euro on the European market, but you are not sure which one has a low entry threshold or increased demand for, for services that you are offering. There are many different information sources about the local markets, a specific online. Um, sorry, I, I miss miss my um, my note. Uh, you also have this uh, additional information about the online trends that you uh, should follow, but thanks to the SEO analysis, you could also get uh, many useful data to help uh, you uh, make up your mind. Is it worth it to expand your business, uh, acquire new location uh, to promote uh, your offer? Of course, the decision uh, about the international expansion is a complex process consisting not only online aspects but also uh, legal and logistic issues. However, SEO market analysis could be very valuable part and um, good first step uh, to create the great uh, general digital strategy. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to talk about the key elements of the international uh, optimization uh, to make it successful <clears throat> on the foreign market markets. But first of all, we need to talk about uh, um, signals that we are sending to Google at which one of them uh, is uh, has the uh, high priority and also thanks to that signal Google is establishing the, the language version uh, of our website and which which of them it's worth to, to show to our users. And first of all is the content, of course. <clears throat> Sorry, I miss I miss my uh, voice. Give me a second. First of all is the content and of course um, every uh, type of the content that uh, we are having on our website, it's, it's crucial to have a nice uh, translated because together with content comes uh, the proper intention behind it. But this is only the one signal that we could send to Google. Another thing is the domain extension, which I will cover later. And of course, uh, hreflang tags uh, where we are pointing out what kind of the country or the language we wanted to target with, uh, with our website. A geo-targeting setup in Google Search Console is something that we could uh, set, but um, most of the time when we choose the proper uh, domain extension, this um, geo-targeting will uh, autom in an automatic way set up on the proper location. <clears throat> and other signals like Google My Business Card, local backlinks, backlinks so all, all the backlinks from the uh, local market, and also the currency. So the set of these signals give us a greater probability uh, of correct positioning uh, of our website in the local search results. Okay, so where is the biggest business potential for, for our services? Uh, and first of all, um, when we think about the potential, it's, it's good to take a look of few types of the keywords and divide it this into a few, uh, few types of intention. Sounds easy, but believe me, it's not that easy as it sounds. Uh, as I mentioned, we could divide this into a few types of intention like informational, navigational, or transactional. Uh, so for example, informational keywords are mostly connected with the blog sections, guidelines, or content hub that we are having on, on website. Uh, navigational one uh, com consists the local queries, like for example, hairdresser in London, uh, and also this type of the keywords uh, are connected with uh, uh, 
uh, with the pages that mostly uh, appearing on uh, Google My Business or, or Google Maps. Uh, and also the transactional one uh, as the name of the uh, mm. oh, can you can you hear me now? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you well. Okay, sorry, but I I lost my connection with my headphones, so I will continue through the uh, through the computer. Okay, uh, where I uh, end up? Okay, I I talk about the transactional uh, keywords. So the those are the keywords that uh, suggest the the, the reflect uh, suggest the intention uh, of uh, purchase. Uh, so most of the time is the um, uh, keywords connected to the model of a specific um, um, specific offer like smartphone. Uh, so when we look at these keywords, we exactly know that this uh, type of uh, um, keywords uh, are uh, highlighted in the search results as the product page. So first we have to analyze uh, all the most important keywords from the business perspective and group them into these three types of user intention. Uh, for that, I really like to use um, Hrefs to see the scale of visibility or um, to be honest, any other tool with a big local uh, database uh, will fit as well. Uh, uh, on top of that, uh, what I recommend uh, is uh, to use also the Google Search Console and the performance report to define the most valuable keywords based on, for example, a click-through ratio. And uh, we uh, could not miss the value of the Google Analytics where we uh, define the, the top URLs that we have to also keep in mind regarding the, the keyword analysis and the general visibility of our website on the local markets. Uh, so yeah, at the beginning, this three tool will be the most useful uh, as the first step of our analysis. And uh, then um, use just Google Translate to find the local equivalents and then go to the Ahrefs because in Ahrefs of, and also the SEMrush has a re report called uh, Keyword Manager or, or uh, something like that that helps you to see the keywords difficulty, uh, popularity, trends on the local market. And also you will see what kind of competitors uh, are visible in SERPs. And uh, additional information that could be also useful is the other market share. Uh, that could be the additional suggestion uh, to, to your clients. Is it worth it uh, to, to go much further and wider regarding the digital strategy? Uh, and invest not only on the SEO, especially where uh, the, um, the competitors are quite active and uh, it will be not that easy to, to achieve the high results. So that's why I always su also suggest uh, to take a look on, on other channels to support each other. Okay, and uh, later we could uh, make another step, which will be the keywords matching to accurate the, the um, to, sorry, to interpret accurate user intention uh, because Google reflects specific user intention uh, throughout the SERPs, help them uh, to find whatever they want. So for example, we have a, uh, domain that is visible on the one market and we want to share uh, also our offer and expand our offer to other markets. And what we have to remember is to, of course, take a look on the search, result, search results because the SERP feature could be a little bit different between the markets uh, and this is connected uh, with the user intention that could be similar between markets, but also 
the the trends and user needs and what uh, and how they are searching for a different type of the um, products or offer because every user has its own way to search uh, for for this type of uh, queries. So that's why it's really good to take a look and compare what type of the uh, extended search results are the most popular on the countries that we wanted to uh, gain our visibility. And this uh, one of the this is the screen from the one of the um, uh, free tool called Rank Ranger. Uh, when we have the information about the mobile SIP features, and this is the example on the Polish market. Uh, when uh, when you see every type of uh, uh, SERP features that are uh, has some kind of uh, higher trends and where we have to um, take a look more uh, into details regarding the keywords uh, keywords um, analysis. And yeah, just to give you an example of, of, for the other markets, as you, as you see, they're a little bit different. And also, thanks to the another tool like advanced web ranking, you see some uh, differences between the markets that could be very useful uh, insights for you to make a deeper investigation. And this type of data may also concern a selected industry, so not only uh, the location. And uh, tools that I love uh, to, to make my keywords analysis is SEMrush because thanks to SEMrush and also Ahrefs, I believe, has this um, option. For each keyword, I have not only information about the volume or global volume, but also the SERP features that I want uh, to, to gain on, uh, on the uh, local market. And um, search engine popularity is also the thing that uh, it's worth to, to keep in mind because um, maybe you know that Google uh, is uh, uh, the well-known search engine and um, on the global level uh, is the most popular one. But when we want to go on the specific uh, location, not every every recommendation and optimization uh, process will look exactly the same between uh, other search engine uh, engines. So that's why it's really good to take a look what is going on on the local market and which type of search engine is the most popular besides Google. And this is also a free tool called Site Counter when you can go and take a look at uh, the market share of each search engine. And as I mentioned, Google worldwide, maybe it's the, uh, the most popular one. But when we take a look more into details, for example, uh, in Russia, Google, uh, it's like 50%, 51% of, of the market share, but it's also good to uh, optimize our page for Yandex in that case, when we want to gain our visibility on the Russian market. Um, and yeah, the, the same thing will be uh, in the Czech Republic, uh, but for example, in China, it's not worth to optimize uh, based only on Google because Baidu uh, is the leading uh, search engine and uh, there we should uh, focusing on the optimization process and all the elements that are important uh, for this type of uh, search engine. And uh, why we should do that to, you know, keep in mind that every search engine working in a different way, because the priorities of all individual elements uh, on our website differ between one search engine to another. And we could define, divide this between two types of signals, 
One is the on-site factors and another is the off-site factors that mix up uh, with each other, but every, uh, every element uh, has its own um, priority and, and the strength when it comes to signals. And for example, for Google, quality, performance, availability is the, the crucial part of the website that we should optimize. But on the other hand, Bing says that content and meta, sorry, and social media activities are the, the most important um, signals uh, that we are taking into the consideration to build the, the ranking. Both so speed and mobile friendliness uh, and proper technical aspects are matter for, for Google and the Bing. However, Microsoft Bing focuses more on the anchor text, for example. So Bing uh, has been known to reward sites with, with matching anchor text for a page title, uh, which was devaluated by, by Google many, many years ago. Um, Okay, uh, and another examples and uh, to show you differences between the search engine is that Google indicates the alternative ven version of the uh, of the website thanks to the preflang tags hreflang tags sorry. Uh, on the other hand, Baidu point out the language uh, um, and country with HTML and meta language tag, which is no longer. Uh, use, using uh, by, by Google. So for example, if we define the hreflang tags uh, based only on the Google recommendation, by the search engine will not uh, perceive it as the alternative uh, language and miss that signals uh, completely. Okay, next thing is the user targeting. Uh, so why choosing the right domain for international posi positioning is, is very important, it's crucial. But first of all, we, we need to uh, have an answer to the question based on what kind of information do we obtain users from a country that we wanted to, to target? Is it by language or location? Or maybe both of these signals are important. And to choose the proper infrastructure uh, and, uh, and to not miss the, the, the local signals that we are sending to Google, we have to think about what kind of strategy uh, will be taken there. Because for example, when we choose the genera generic top level domain, um, that will be not, not enough signal to Google what kind of uh, uh, location we wanted to target. And for example, this should be um, not only on, as a base, but uh, in ad additionally, we have to create um, some kind of directories that reflects what kind of uh, location or language we wanted to target. But uh, when we decided to uh, target only the specific country, that, that would be the best if you could choose the country specific uh, top level domain like um, .pl, .de, .fr, etc. Uh, and of course, this second solution is um, very expensive and uh, requires separate maintenance and positioning, but is the most effective one. So if you have the possibility to um, optimize your page for the uh, specific location, I really encourage you to do that because it will be much easier for you to rank higher within a short period of time. Of course, this is not only the, the one solution and, and I encourage you to go to the and uh, get acquainted with the official uh, Google uh, recommendation and guidelines uh, where you have all the pros and cons for each um, uh, for each solution and uh, of course you could choose whatever you want and together with SEO specialist 
uh, you could decide it which op the option would be the best for you. Uh, yeah, sorry, I lost my word. Uh, okay, let's go to the another slide. Okay. Uh, it's also worth to mention about the big no-nos regarding the international targeting because one of the solutions that is well known but not great not the great one is that the target uh, audience based on, on their ip so dynamically change content uh, rather that redirects user based on the language setting or location and this is the big uh, no-nos because uh, this has caused a problem with the indexation because Google might not find and crawl your, uh, all variation of the website, of your website. And this is because the Googlebot crawler usually uh, originates from the USA. So uh, what Google will see is only the one version of the website. Uh, moreover, the crawler sends HTTP requests without setting uh, except language in the request header. So maybe user could enter your al alternative version of the website, but crawlers did not, didn't. Yeah, uh, sorry, don't. Uh, so that's why uh, it's it's really crucial to keep this strategy regarding the international expansion, expansion very clear and make sure that you send every necessary signal to understand, to be uh, understood by, by Google. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, there are many, many other signals that, that you could uh, send to the search engines to define what kind of the audience do you want to target. Yeah, and last but not least, I just want to uh, talk about really briefly about uh, our approach as a blurring uh, to the international SEO, um, because uh, I lead the most of the international SEO projects in our company. And when it comes to the website optimization for, for a markets, my motto is think global, act local, uh, as our goal is to create the website that uh, is fully adjusted and helpful uh, for uh, local users. And we believe that all marketing activities should be localized. And uh, that's why when we, uh, when we are preparing the, the strategy, the global strategy, uh, we also um, cooperating with friendly local agencies um, as uh, Basta Digital also, because we, um, we are uh, members of the CEDA Digital Alliance. And uh, as this network consists one of the best European agencies, uh, we also share our knowledge uh, in general, but also regarding the specific type of deal or offer that um, we might have or also uh, our friendly uh, agencies. And uh, this is very, interesting approach in my opinion because every market it's different regarding not the general uh, google recommendation but the the trends that might be on the market and also user might have a different interaction with the website and they get used to it some kind of uh, steps that we might not see on our local market. So that's why this um, knowledge share is it's, it's crucial to prepare uh, success, successful um, international um, offer regarding SEO and not only, of course. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned that the local agencies uh, are very helpful when it comes to determine the scope that fits the best to our uh, clients' needs. Uh, so uh, we go through the K specific KPIs and uh, prepare uh, 
scope, template of the scope and discuss with all the agencies what would be the best for our clients to offer and send that offer in the final, final version with all the local insights. <clears throat> I also lost my voice again, sorry. <clears throat> uh, and we have to think about international SEO as in not, you know, the, the addition, not the separate thing, but something additional that we might have when it comes to the uh, positioning of, of our website. <clears throat> so the basic stuff like technical audit, or uh, content audit will be the same. But for example, in the content audit part, most of the time we, uh, we rely on the uh, insights and feedback from our local agencies because the local knowledge is it's price, priceless here, especially when we wanted to cover the, uh, when we want to proper uh, cover the, the user intention. Uh, and of course, uh, additionally, uh, we uh, could prepare the expansion strategy. So this is the in-depth analysis of selected uh, market in search, um, search results, all the content recommendations regarding the good practices and all the technical recommendations, including uh, geo-targeting. So all that stuff that I mentioned at the beginning um, related to the uh, to the domain extension and also uh, geo-targeting on the Google Search Console, that kind of stuff could be prepared as, as a separate type of offer. But most of the time when our clients uh, choose the, the, the general audit and we have the information that uh, they want to expand their offer on other markets, we include this, um, this element also within our general SEO audit. And of course, we have to remember that the SEO industry is not only uh, based on the keywords and uh, the hard technical stuff, but uh, also all type of the optimization for performance, crawl budget optimization, uh, web, uh, web vitals performance, and uh, user experience optimization could be also useful, especially when, when it comes to the different markets. And what we love to do is to divide our strategy uh into a few segments so to say uh, because when we look at the keywords and all the signals that we that we have um on on our website we could see where our users come from and thanks to that we could target uh, the specific type of activities to improve our visibility if on each stage. So for example, we, uh, we stick to the model of customer journey because we believe that if we cover all the intentions behind each uh, stage, we, are, uh, we have a better chance to achieve much more rather than just you know optimize on the general keywords and to not think about the user experience and and user touch points with our website i don't want to cover each uh, of this um uh, of these elements uh, but i really believe that for, of course we have to gain our new user, new users, especially on the mar on the new market, but we should also working to retain them and increase their engagement, thanks to the uh, content optimization, uh, user experience optimization, uh, internal linking, etc. So. I believe that this is the most important thing that we have to cover not only um, on the SEO international sites, but in general in, uh, in our SEO uh, daily work. Okay, so that's it from my side.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aga. And now we'll continue with the questions. There are a few already. So let me start with one that maybe also is repeated on Slido is that what about if we, if uh, some customer wants to, or a company wants to expand abroad and they have just a local domain? What do you think? Is it okay to expand with the local domain and having multiple language versions, or is it better to maybe acquire? Um, international version now we have plenty of TLD so we can have some even some strange domains like dot shop or I don't know those online etc so what do you think is is the best uh, for maybe faster expansion yeah the the local domains could be uh, tough to optimize and uh, and rank higher on other markets, so that's why I recommend to to go with a generic top level domain and uh, working on the catalogs that reflects the the local language, because when we are working only on the country uh, level top domain that will be not the best solution not only when it comes to the signals but also users are not get used to it this type of uh, you know domain extension especially that for example uh, in uh, in italy when users see the foreign uh, domain they will not click on it because they are afraid that this is some kind of scam so that's why I, I really like to make the final decision. It depends on which market I wanted to, I wanted to gain. And what about, let's, let's turn this around a bit. What about uh, if international domain is not enough? How, how about to approach this, for example, if we should acquire all the country domains that we are expanding to or just be okay with the international or the or the neutral TLD, uh, as, as I said before, maybe .com or .shop or whatever. What, what, what is your approach? Uh, does, it, does it make sense to actually acquire local domains and split uh, link building and content efforts and so on? Yeah, so it really depends on our offer because when we have the, the general um, domain like .com, when we wanted to target, for example, not only one location, but all users that are speaking in a, in a certain language, for example, like English, uh, that we could stay with the, with the one domain uh, and target every user that's speaking in a certain, with a certain language. But if we wanted to, target the specific location that will be better to have the, the local domain only. Okay, thank you. What about uh, your opinion on physical hosting location? Now we know that uh, many companies, especially large ones are hosting in the on, on the cloud services such as Amazon or Google. So do you think Google still uh, uses signal for physical location uh, of the hosting for for to to match it to the local uh, queries or how does this work? Yeah, I've heard that this could, that could be um, some kind of the signals. But uh, as I mentioned uh, on my presentation, the, we have many other signals that we could proper target for our location besides the the hosting. So I think that will be not a big problem when we have. Uh, local host and we wanted to target a different different country and what about the who is info the domain information the register registrant and so on do you think uh, or from your experience is this is this something that we should be focusing on like changing our who is info or stuff like this i i think I think I don't understood okay, the so, question. So the, when, when you register a domain, you have to put all the uh, registrant details there about the, okay. who is the owner and so on. Do you think this matters for Google? No, I think not. Okay. So let's skip a bit to link building. There is a question on if the link building differs between different countries. So what's your experience regarding uh, link building, uh, maybe techniques, in different markets, either in Central Europe or even uh, getting out further? 
Yeah. So um, yeah, there there are a few uh, differences between the markets. For example, in Poland, the uh, the, the most um, often technique is to by sponsored articles. We uh, are not using it in blue rank. Uh, the forums or um, any other um, pages that uh, um, link to our uh, to our partners uh, through like many different type of the links that are not matching with the user intention. So most of the time we are focusing on the sports on link or cooperation with the bloggers. But on the other hand, in uh, for example, in Russia, the forums and this type of the um, gray hat link building, so to say, it's 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 well known and it's working fine there. So I think uh, that's why uh, it's good to have this insights from the local agency or, or uh, native uh, native speaker to to have this uh, additional information what would be the best for for you uh, on the local market because uh, even if you know, Google shared the basic principles, what, what we should follow or not. But as I saw on the different markets, it depends. It depends on the user needs. It depends how users are searching for a different type of the offer. Is it, uh, is they pay attention to uh, this kind of the link or uh, articles that we are sharing? It's many different signals that we um, need to take account um, regarding the link building, but the proper uh, um, market analysis and the competitor analysis uh, should uh, should be fine to uh, take a look what type of techniques they are using and try to adjust to our website. Yeah, and as you said that different markets are different, but uh, it's, uh, I think, good practice to follow the larger markets and see what works there because even, for example, Slovakia is a uh, quite a specific market in terms that it's a small country. Google doesn't understand Slovak language that well uh, as, as they can understand English. I think it's maybe similar for, for Polish and other markets, but uh, we try to look into what's happening in the US market or globally and try to follow that because we know that if some uh, good practice in, in global market is to do one thing, then it will be, even if it's not now in Slovakia, it will be in the future. So as you said that maybe sometimes, yeah, forum links are okay if we are not doing it on a large scale, but if yeah. somebody is just doing that for link building, probably they will fail. But uh, what about, what about uh, sponsored articles? You mentioned that uh, in Poland, it's, it's common to use uh, links from yeah. sponsored articles. Uh, is, is that because that works well or other forms uh, don't work or, or website owners are not open uh, to link to other websites or how does this work in Poland? Yeah, uh, in Poland, most of the time we are focusing on the quality of each links and we have uh, uh, mm, we have a ma much more power to uh, when it comes to gain such a link building because we create an article, we uh, saturate with the proper keywords, we uh, set up a, a links that we wanted to promote and also choose the, the external website that on, on which we wanted to promote on. Um, so this is the safest uh, way to, to gain a link that it's uh, really valuable for our link profile. And I think this is the main reason of that. Even if we do not gain many of, of links, uh in compared to our competitors i i believe that it is it is much uh much better to gain a few links but the higher quality right 
Okay, and maybe let's finish with the last question uh, about different SEO tools on foreign markets. So you mentioned that you are using the general tools or the global tools like SEMrush or Ahrefs and such, but uh, we know that, for example, for Slovakia, uh, there are some tools like uh, Mangools that have good, de good data on, on uh, Slovak um, uh, search queries and maybe for other markets, there are other uh, local tools. Do you, do you use also local tools when going to different countries or do you just uh, use the global tools like Ahrefs and so on? Yeah, uh, I mostly I rely on the Ahrefs and SEMrush because I have much wider database when it comes to foreign markets. Uh, but uh, the uh, the more detailed information uh, I need from the local agencies. And so that's why uh, most of the time we um, move the keywords analysis and uh, um, define proper intention through the uh, keywords uh, to the local agencies because they are using the local tools. For example, the mentioned Senuto here, they have a really nice database, but all, only uh, regarding the Polish market. So I believe that all of you, all the specialists and all the agencies that we are uh, cooperating with has its own uh, and thanks to that we have a much wider uh, database and information about the, the local queries or maybe okay. yeah you have something to to add there do you uh, have uh, any the general but good um, tool that we could use as the SEO specialist I, I think it's, uh, as, as you said, that uh, some countries, especially the small ones in Central Europe, there are some uh, specific tools like we are using Mangos both for Slovakia and Czech Republic, and maybe some other people will prefer something else for these two countries. But yes, local tools work better at this point because their data is better. But maybe in, uh, in two or three years, we'll see global tools taking on also on the smaller markets and, and having more data. So. We'll see how, how it works and uh, let's close it up. So thank you, Agnieszka. This was Agnieszka Kaninovic talking about international SEO today. And my name is Daniel Durish. Uh, and this was another session of SEO Zras that you can uh, follow and you can follow also uh, other recordings with other guests on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And also this one uh, will be uh, put there later. So. If you missed maybe some parts of it, uh, you can uh, see it uh, there. And also, thank you again and uh, hope to see you next time. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. And I keep finger crossed. This is the not last time that uh, I'm here. So if you have uh, some uh, SEO panel or uh, you want to uh, cover some, some other topics, not only the uh, international SEO. I'm here to help you. And I also, um, I hope that today's presentation uh, was useful for all of you. <laughs> yeah, we hope so too. And uh, thank you again, and everybody for participating. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice day.